So, welcome everyone to Freelancer Discovery. Today with another interview, and today we have Reeves on the call. Hey Reeves. E. Welcome, to the, welcome to the show. And uh, you are leading the Xenos faction. Yes, that is correct. So I'll, I'll get to the first question which I ask many leaders, which is obviously what your faction is about. What ideas do you have? With, like, why did you <laughs> choose to, you know, do Xenos and shit? <laughs> Explain well, it's this a, a little. It's a fun story, really. Yeah. Uh, basically, I didn't have any intention of joining the Xenos. Like, the Xenos were never something that was a, oh. a primary concern of mine. They were just this cool faction in the background that I knew existed. Yep. But I didn't have much participation. Uh, that all changed one day when I met Evo on basically what was uh, just an indie pirate ship. Yeah, yeah. And we had like this really long conversation, and through this, I was recruited into the faction. Uh, yeah. It was just one of those things that. So it was just this effortless process of, hey, I'm flying the ship and I'm having fun. What if, what's going on here? Fun <laughs> isn't allowed. What's then, fun in Discovery? Come on. <laughs> I know. Yeah. What is this? this what is allowed. this? <laughs> true, true. <laughs> I, I, so I, I just fell down this rabbit hole of like, hey, this is a really cool faction, I'm having fun. And I decided to commit to it. I made it one of my primary factions on the server. And this was back in a time where, uh, honestly, the Xenos had a single digit number of people behind them. At mm -hmm. most, you could get two people to log. Yeah. But I still had a ton of fun. And eventually, Evo's official dumb request failed. And after that point, he was you know, naturally disappointed and a little of course, depressed, yeah, so yeah. He, he handed over leadership to me because I had the passion for it. Is, is Evo actually still part, or did he leave this He's world? actually a really integral part of the faction right oh, now. Oh, okay. Because okay. With the way officialdom is set up, he's the one that does all the coordination with the dev team. Nice, nice, okay. But moving on to your actual question, yeah. I know I've gone off on a complete tangent there. It's okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> we, 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 have a, Xenos, we have a lot of time. It's okay. <laughs> true. Well, Go on. The Xenos are a bit of a unique oddity as yep. far as freelancers can see. They were a startlingly accurate prediction of what the future of America would be like with all the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I guess, ultra-nationalism. Uh, true. You have to admit, it's, it's really good. It's really it spot is. on. It is spot on. <laughs> True. And what scares me is that the guys who made this game had no way of knowing, like, hey, this is gonna happen a few years mm. down the line, but it didn't. I, and I, I guess there were some aspects, like, back in the day, like, you know, some uh, nationalists, etc., in America, so maybe they had a little bit of an idea. What is it around? I mean, yeah, but, I Maybe. mean, white nationalists. Were yeah, okay, common, not, right? yeah, true. <laughs> but the Xenos are unique because they are an ultra nationalist faction. Yeah. One of the few. And they are also one of the few terrorist factions. Yeah, that's true. Also, one that's of true. the oldest terrorist factions Actually, on the server. Actually, if I, if I remember now, just talking from Discovery, not Vanilla, uh, Xenos and the Marquis are like the only. Terrorist faction, or is there more? Um, you've got the Xenos, the GC, the, oh, the GC. Blood Dragons, mm -hmm. the Order, technically, even technically, though they have yeah. the best of intentions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I believe the Unioners as well. As oh, Virginia, true, they true. They classified as terror. So it was these really few niche and obscure factions that were branded as terrorists mm -hmm. because of how extreme they were. Yeah. Now, the Xenos are pretty unique because Vanilla set them up as being one of the fastest growing unlawful factions in Liberty. Yeah. Because one of Liberty's biggest problems is the fact that it chews through people like they're cheddar cheats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people to Liberty are just commodities, capital. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. So you end up having a lot of poor people. And over the 10 years or so that the XA has existed, they've had a lot of varying interpretations of how the Xenos should be. Which, of course, I disagreed with, but the faction does have a lot of history. Yep. So it wouldn't be fair for me to stake a claim to any of the decades of development this thing has. Sure, yeah. Are you still... I got... 
Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the primary ideas I had when I took over leadership was I'd like to see this faction go back to the. And oh. I used to have plenty of conversations with people about why I didn't think XA's version of the Xenos worked and that it just wasn't fun. And it would always end up with the same conversation. Like, people would disagree with me, but they'd also <laughs> find it really hard to logically disagree with me. Like, if you yeah, think yeah. about it, we're a faction that hates foreigners. Yeah. That's all they set up the Xenos as. We expun expunge foreigners, we steal cargo from them, and we True. care about liberty. We're nationalists. Yes, yes. But then that begs the question, why are we shooting the other Libertonian factions? Hmm, yeah. And I would get answers like, oh, they're harming the liberty people, and that's evil. Uh, I mean, we're kind of the bad guys, too. True. I, I don't think we'd necessarily care about the morals of the story. Mm-hmm. And there is also like this huge stigma on basically one of the most important aspects of Xeno Vanilla Lore, which was Cardamine. As mm. funny as that is. <laughs> okay. If you actually look at some info cards or even rumors from Vanilla, specifically about this field that we're in, the Jersey Debris Field, yep. it was something the Xenos wanted very much to capture and take over. Because it's in this particular field that a lot of drug shipments pass through. If the ah, Xenos okay. could control that flow, they would control the flow of cardamine into Liberty. But wait, do I understand this right? Is Wait, maybe I misunderstood. But the, is Xenos in support of cardamine or not? They're not. Well, the Xenos themselves don't like cardamine. Yeah. But I they're mean, very practically minded people. I see. Because I was thinking the Cardamine thing was more of a rogue thing, wasn't it? The rogues? Well, yes, the, the rogues themselves also have... Uh, they're entrenched in the Cardamine black market. They do most oh, yeah. of the heavy moving True. and like the unlawful distribution. And that's one of the things we'd also like to take from them. That's why both factions are hostile to one another. Ah, I see. Okay. So the, uh, the difference is... is yeah. The difference is the Xenos wouldn't use Cardamine themselves. We would use it against people. Ah, okay. Uh, specifically, the rich addicts on Manhattan, like the businessmen, the politicians who are all addicts, mm -hmm. we'd have them under our thumbs. That's the whole objective, to take over by taking over their drug. I see. So, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. And Influence. that is what brings us into conflict with other Liberty factions, like the lane hackers, the rogues, the yep. junkers. Yep. I see. I guess we can move on to the next question. If exactly. There is one. I just yeah. The next one is actually let me see. There are some like sub questions that are within the uh, bigger questions. So um, let me just see. Uh, recent internal changes, new leadership. I mean, you just explained that with evil. Has there been any? changes in your high command that you want to talk about and are like looking forward to or, like you know introduce them to the people we've got a very minimalist high command at the moment it's uh it's mostly me as one i see yep. evo as like honorary one i see he handles the outreaches to the dev team yep uh then you have karst and jace as advisors uh jace? i guess respectively they're yeah, Jace is also a part of the fashion. Jace, you mean uh, the original JC or? Jace as in the LSF Jace. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tasted yeah, yeah. Jace, the, Jace. The original. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, dude. He's a cool guy who's pretty interested in the faction, so I thought, why not? I will we'll give him a chance at it. And sure. he's been pretty valuable at giving input so far. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this guy has been playing in Liberty for a li really long time. So I understand why he would be part of this. Okay. Okay. Is there anything you want to add to that? or? Well, I guess the hate sea of the faction is so small because, to be honest, the hate sea doesn't decide the bulk of things. Uh, Usually when we make a decision, you'll find that we'll take it back to the member chat and see what the actual membership does. And then on the basis of those thoughts, we'll narrow down some options and then decide. So technically the hate sea, even if it's small, is yeah. really only there to just represent the other people. Ah, uh, I see, I see. A I mean, lot of people seem to be under the impression that it's like basically me dictating what the faction <laughs> should and shouldn't 
And for, I, I guess I can understand why that's a thing, because I did, I was very dead set on having my way with taking the faction back to vanilla. Ah, I see. But apart from that, I've been very open to what people thought. And I'm always eager to hear what people think. Actually, now that you mention that, there was this qu question maybe related to that. This, uh, you said that you kept most of the things the same as the old, uh, old XA Lazino Alliance, but since you took over, like obviously you as the new leadership, what exactly has changed until now, like? Is there like even small changes that we want to know from the old Xeno Alliance? Has there been any small changes that you want to talk about? I guess if you actually looked at the roleplay between then and now, you'd just mm -hmm. find like a really obvious shift. Yeah. Before, Xenos were represented as like these really gnarly, uneducated rednecks. Ah, like I'm going to yeah. use the word because that's how they <laughs> behave. They were like these people True. who barely knew a word of English. <laughs> Uh, but if you look at the Xenos of now, like yeah. XA Xenos now, yeah. they'll have some kind of intellect behind them. They're still very aggressive and crude people, yeah. but they tend to be very motivated now. There's a goal to what they're doing. It's not just blind nonsense. Oh, yeah. See, Because see. what the old XA did was, you know, it rode off the coattails of a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people found it funny, and that was fine for a couple years, but it's not a serious thing to live off of. Yeah memes don't get taken seriously that's true, and that's true. precisely the problem faction couldn't attract anybody who wanted to seriously commit yeah that was one of the biggest things i changed by making the faction take itself seriously the reason nobody else took it seriously was because we weren't doing it ourselves yep so i brought back the cardamine aspect i brought in the dealings with the corsairs uh there is a potential growing hostility with HF, even though they've been a very long-standing ally. And there is a basis behind that, but I suppose I'll save that for a later question. Sure, sure. The, now I just I just went over your ID and the uh, info card. It says there was an expanding interest in the artifact, art, artifact trade. What does, what does that mean? Uh, well, as you're well aware, the Junkers and Uniters usually have the mainstay of the artifact trade and liberty under their belts. The, I know uh, that Uniters had relationships with Corsairs, but like, how are the Xenos in that? Like, what's... Well, that's actually really funny, and this goes back to a roleplay development which occurred during the Gallic War. Okay. Now, the Custodi mm -hmm. allied themselves with Gallia. Yeah. And I guess by proxy somehow, because the TBH never resisted this, they were also seen as an ally. <laughs> even though they've been pretty adamant about the true. fact that they aren't. That's true, yeah. Uh, what eventually happened is that there was this story development where the Gallic Royal Navy blew up Trafalgar Base, which is a Junker station, or they took it over and killed the Junker. Yeah. And the Junker Congress was very upset about this. So they basically got in touch with the Corsairs and said, we're going to put an embargo on you. Hmm. So no goods from the Corsairs would be allowed on Junker bases and vice versa, the Junkers wouldn't trade anything with the Corsairs. And this came right at a time where I was getting in touch with the Corsairs saying, hey, can we do business again? <laughs> so I'm sure you can imagine how that conversation was. Right, goes. right. <laughs> But nice hey, we timing. need a replacement for the Junkers, and, True. and it just happened. <laughs> okay, okay. So you do have relationships to the Corsairs, but... Purely business relationships. Business, yeah, let's say business relationship. But how does that leave the outcasts? What are your views on the outcasts? Uh, I mean, it, we would technically have a very similar, albeit hostile, relationship to the outcasts if we ever succeeded ah. in taking over the shipment of cardamine it would be more of a you know i'm shipping your product i'm in charge it wouldn't be friendly a lot of people seem to think that we'd be the best of buddies and do business True. together no okay uh if anything the outcasts wouldn't care and we'd make sure to control things from our end mm -hmm. it would more or less be the same thing i'm sure the outcasts would be trying to undermine us and take it back over through like a proxy Yep. And we'd also be competing with them in the same way. But again, this is mostly hypothesis. I don't think that's ever going to become a thing. I see. I see. Okay. 
Well, I'll move on to the uh, second bigger question, so to say. Uh, I mean, it's not really big, it's just it has more content in it. Uh, where is your faction standing right now? Diplomacies, RP stories, any procedures you're taking? Uh, I guess one of the newer things we're doing is we're getting in touch with the IMG. I've heard a lot of, uh, ah, a lot of skepticism and doubt about it. Especially that weird thing with uh, against liberty, war against liberty or something, I just heard recently. I don't think what? there's a it's not, I, I don't know, maybe it's just rumors around Discord chats, but like people were like, oh, IMG is waging this war against Bretonian Liberty now and Crater, something like that. I don't know what's, uh, well, I, what's going on. Well, there are building hostilities, but basically hostilities, our, yeah. our sympathy with the IMG is purely over the fact that they lost an asset to a uh, foreign entity that had no right to take it from them. I see, I it, see. It's an ideological thing. It's like, hey, you that was your property and they took it from you. That's not fair. Yeah, We'll I see. help you shoot them. I see. And even if we go back to Vanilla, the IMG were one of the few entities that the Xenos did not hate. Hmm. Because in Vanilla, yeah. the IMG were part of the original core of people that founded the Xenos. Like they descend from the same ancestors who worked in the same fields back in back in the day in Colorado. Okay. So if you actually trace the ancestry of the faction, they stem from the same incident. When Jobs and Liberty came to a grinding halt and that field was mined out, people had two choices. They could try their luck elsewhere in the same field of mining and Which... potentially have to deal with the same thing again yeah. or they could become Xenos. Ah, okay. Now I see that split in there. Okay. Interesting, interesting. So, like, you have that sympathetic relationship between both factions. It's almost like meeting a long-lost brother. It's like, hey, how have you been? Yeah. <laughs> There's a ton of differences between you, but you still recognize the fact that, hey, we were born together. True, true. So when the Xeno Alliance sees the IMG getting stepped on, we react to that quite profoundly. You're stepping on somebody that's family. We're going to step back and shoot at you. That's okay. I see that from your uh, point, like uh, from your perspective. But how does the IMG look at that? Do, you, do they actually see you as, you know, part of an alliance or something? Or is it just, you know, that you have sympathy, that's it? Or do you actually have a cooperation with each other? Uh, basically, the way this started was with <clears throat> the CR betrayal of the IMG. Mm, I, yeah. I, I'm going to call it a betrayal. Yeah, it is. They it, declared it, hostility. <laughs> I agree. It, they it declared is. hostility and were like, hey, we're going to seize all your assets. Mm -hmm. And one of these assets was in Coronado. Yeah. So one of the things I instantly pushed for is I said, the Xenos need ZOI in Coronado. And people were like, why? And I told them, well, they, we have a role play interest in protecting the IMG because of, you know, been a war. Exactly, yeah. And there was, of course, the fact that there used to be a system by the name of Humboldt, which was removed. Yeah. I so we had that. like a vacancy in our ZOI list that I wanted to fill in, give yeah. people more stuff to do. I mean, it's so literally when we, Coronado. When we went out there yeah, and yeah. made contact with the IMG, they were quite receptive because they were desperate. They didn't have the ability to push back a traditional military on yeah. all on their own. So it was mostly the IMG, the lane hackers, and then the Xenos working together in a really loose alliance to make sure that the IMG didn't lose their holdings on Picos. And they mm. kept it, thankfully. Yeah. Fast forward to now, and you have the IMG and the Xenos talking about subjects like full alliance, technological exchanges, and trade and partnership. So I guess you could say there's a lot of back and forth, and there's yeah. like mutual cooperation on the subject. Speaking of alliances, uh, I would actually like to go to the Hellfire Legion and the Separatists. Because... <laughs> Obviously, oh they're not vanilla <laughs> lore, so how did that actually affect the Xenos moving from vanilla to these two different factions playing a part in Liberty? Like, what's going on between you guys? Honestly, I, I, I've never actually said this, but it's actually really hard to interact with 
a non-vanilla faction as a vanilla faction. You're always second guessing. <laughs> what do I do with these people? True. Uh, if it's a junker, I know I have to shoot him. Mm -hmm. But what do I do with the separatist? I don't know this man. He's new. True. Do I talk to him? Do I shoot him? I don't know. So it's always really difficult to figure out how you're supposed to treat these people. Yeah. And of course, over the course of the past 10 years, there's that full alliance with HF. And as of now, neutrality with Harmony. Because again, we have a few common interests lined up. Yeah. As I mean, wasn't like the Hellfire Legion... Um, didn't they like extend from the Xenos or was it Lane Hackers? I don't know, one of both? Into their uh, own the Hellfire faction? The Hellfire Legion was basically... <coughs> like the separatists and the legion are almost identical mm -hmm. in that's fact, true the separatists now are what the hf used to be yeah yeah and the hf now is an you know like a modification of what it used to be yeah. the hf were a group of military defectors that you know basically escaped to magellan mm -hmm. and were rescued by the lane haggers true and they formed an alliance after that point initially the hellfire legion was fully allied to the lane hackers Yep. But through the course of like a change in their leadership, they no longer could tolerate or stand piracy by the lane ah. hackers and their allies. Okay. So they did a complete 180 and turned hostile to the lane hackers, the outcasts, and the rogues, while maintaining their hostility with the lawful factions. I see. For strategic reasons and also out of sympathy for the fact that the Xenos have suffered, the HF ultimately offered the Xenos an alliance. And that is why I'm sitting here today in a prosecutor. True. <laughs> I see. Okay. So it's it's just, I mean, as you call it, common interest instead of ideological, yeah, we're with you. Like, this is. Because, I mean, if I read correctly, HF was something like a weird socialist kind of. What was it? They're if a libertarian I, socialist breakaway yeah, state. Something like that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, with you I, as I, an ultra-nationalist... I've never heard of libertarian socialist. <laughs> don't, that let's not question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to question that. But, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you being ultra-nationalist, how does that conflict? Like... Like... Yeah. It always felt awkward, <laughs> because in my mind it would have made more sense if the Xenos were the bigger entity and the Legion were smaller ones. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Because because then the Xenos would not have a problem with the Legion doing whatever they wanted to do. Because it wouldn't be bad or anything. Yeah. The issue with it, the way it's set up currently is that the Legion is much bigger and the Xenos are of course much less well equipped. Yeah. And we do the more extreme things. So it almost feels like the HF is holding off on some kind of whim of mercy to not stop us from committing acts of terrorism. And that's mm. usually a bad setup to have because it can completely mess up the dynamic of a faction. True. Like if you took away terrorism from the Xenos, they wouldn't be Xenos anymore. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Let me move on before we jump to the third bigger one. Uh, what's the plan to make Xenos great again, so to say? Oh, God. <laughs> That's just uh. a basic question that really is. Like, what is, yeah, <laughs> before we jump the into Indian future. Are ready for president, make <laughs> liberty great again. Today exactly, exactly. <laughs> I have Honestly, to ask the primary uh, the primary plan we have is that we just want to be an appealing experience. We want to be fun. Yeah. If we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong. Yes. Yeah, we're less focused on all the drama and bullshit like that because yeah. it's, honestly, it's just a, it's exhausting. It is. And people don't have time for it. So what we usually focus on doing is we try to find new things to do. Like, hey, this is a new conflict. Let's find a new way to participate. There's an event happening. How can we be involved? Uh, what kind of new roleplay can we do? What are the factions we can get in touch with or have events with? And basically, how can the faction be developed and given more depth and personality? Yep. Like, these are all universal things that people will like. You'll get the roleplay minded people who mm -hmm. want to do their stories and some such. Yep. You'll also get the PvP minded people who would like to have a lot of good fights, yep. which we can offer by being hostile with virtually everybody. Pretty much, yeah. And. 
then you'll get the people who are like a very small niche in Lice Summer in the middle in the sense that they do both, but they don't really focus on one or the other. Or the other. They tend yeah. to be the biggest challenge. <laughs> I see. But to develop our appeal, we'd actually like to... What we're mostly doing is we're trying to stay true to vanilla. We want people to like the Xenos for what the Xenos are. Yeah. But we also do want to do some new things. Like, the whole dealings with the Corsairs is not vanilla. Yeah. As far as I know, the Xenos had no contact with them because they were basically so far away and True. detached from the brain. They had no interest here. True. But it's something that we believe is crucial to the faction's identity to keep it the way it was. Yep. While not restricting people from doing what they want to do. There's a lot of freedom in the way a person in the XA can conduct themselves. Like, a good example I can give you is, like, my character, the one I'm flying right now, will yep. usually kill the lawful forces he meets. That's just the way he is. It's yep. how he has fun. He kills the people. Yep. Likewise, you'll have other people who will sometimes spare Liberty Navy if they're losing the fight and give them an opportunity to leave. That's never something the faction punishes. It's never something we tell you not to do. It's ah. something we encourage. Okay. Because within the Xenos, you have a lot of differences of opinion. They have different ideas of how this mission can be accomplished, but in the end, the mission is the same. Yeah, I see. I see. But, I mean, you mentioned the uh, influence of politicians, right? So with Karnaman and stuff. So does that mean Xenos actually try to play a part in politics in Liberty, or are they just for their own profit or whatever. Uh, is, is politics actually just a side kind of thing? Or are you guys actually interested in advancing in Liberty's politics somehow? Well, I wouldn't say that the Xenos have a political interest. Yeah. Uh, I think they're the least political faction on the server simply because they laugh at politics. They Pretty take much. advantage of it, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the end goal is like, I've seen this in a in a rumor, I believe, or an info card. The Xenos are these people who are stuck on the bottom of a bear. And their only objective in life, since they can't get any lower than this, <laughs> is that they have to claw their way back to the top. Yeah. Or die trying. That's the only objective they have. So if you can control the politicians and the elite, you yeah. are automatically the apex of society. Pretty much. That's their objective. They want to be the dominant force of liberty. They want to dominate Ah, things. I see, yeah, yeah. It's a very selfish, vindictive, and retributive kind of methodology. It's not political, it's mm -hmm. personal. Personal. I see, I see. So, while we are at this, what are your goals and what is the future of the Xenos? You know how they ask, how do you, z how do you see the Xenos in 10 years or something, you know, how do you see the factions in 10 years? So what is your view, future view of this faction? I don't know, maybe in 10 years we'll finally have our own VHF? <laughs> or gun <laughs> oh, yeah. or something of the guys, ship line, because, yeah. That would be... Yeah, it's actually really weird because the Xenos are one of those niche factions that just doesn't have a ship line. That's really definitely one of the things True. I want to fix. Uh, there is also the Alabama which is a battleship that I'd like to do something with in the future. Yeah. I don't know if I would like to SRP that or turn it into an NPC asset, but I'd like to do something with it because it has a legacy. And I also recall making a promise to somebody that I would do something with it. Okay. Okay. On more intermediary lines, I suppose, I'd like to continue with our dealer, you know, our dealings with the Corsairs, mm -hmm. maybe expand them a little, branch into other commodities, not just artifacts. Yep. I remember there being human organs. I'm not sure what happened to that, actually. That's ah. something I'd have loved to deal with as well, but it seems to be gone. True. Now that you mention it, yeah. I do also want to see the Xenos, you know, taking a very small part of the cardamine trade away from the Junkers and maybe selling it on... Uh, Pittsburgh there behind us. Mm -hmm. I actually never want to see the Xenos win completely because if we win completely we'll suddenly have nothing to do. That's true, yeah. 
Like, there are certain quintessential goals of the faction that should always stay incomplete. So there was... the faction always retains its identity. That's true. That, that's actually, if I remember correctly, there was a faction back in the day, uh, a mixed Unioners and LWB faction, which had their goals achieved, and I remember the, the faction just died. Like, literally. There was nothing to do. That was it. So that's why they kind of split into two different factions and had like new goals, etc. So, yeah, I, I see you in that. Okay. So this is a more personal question. Uh, we don't have many of them, but like... Uh, it's a little bit about knowing the faction leader. So it's like... Your history with Disco, can you like explain a little bit what are your current views of the game and the mod? Where's the community going? What's going on? Etc. Uh, complicated question. I suppose yeah. I'll start at the beginning. Uh, yeah. Basically, when I started playing Discovery, the first faction I ever joined was, you guessed it, the Liberty Navy. Mm -hmm. It was just the most appealing to me, and I guess in a way it's the most newbie-friendly at the end of the day. Was it, was it around the era where they had war with Rhineland? Was it? Uh, no, it was just after, after the peace was happening. Oh, okay. Like you had all the peace dealings. It was pretty fresh. I, I joined see. just at the end of the war. Yeah. Okay. And I had a great time with the faction. In fact, uh, I, I remember <laughs> Ellen being at the top of the activity list purely <laughs> because I would never stop flying. I had a lot of. Yeah. I was very new to Discovery, and you know how it is. Like, yeah. you join the mod, and it's such a rush of new stuff to do. True. It's so deep and involving. True. And I couldn't get enough of it. Of course, this ties into my next point with what I think is essentially the enemy of an experience like that, which is the community itself, or at least portions of the community. Yep. Uh, we become so focused on stuff that isn't even involved with the game. Like We're more focused with how we disagree with somebody else. What's the best way to put this person down? How can we bully them, undermine their interests, or whatever? And I feel like that spoils a lot of the potential that, you know, specifically a roleplay server has. Yeah. It's actually interesting that you bring that up, because I had this uh, discussion on in previous interviews, and I was like, uh, what changed? Like, I, I, the out-of-roleplay conflicts was a thing, obviously, so it's really long, okay. But it feels like, like you said, the community devo developed into something where you just want to end someone instead of just disagreeing with them, saying, hey, I don't like this idea, but it's okay if you do it. Like, you know, it's more about, no, I'm going to finish you. Like, you know, like, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's, it gets it's so vindictive. I true. don't get it. Like, true. when I started playing the game, I didn't have any of these feelings. I, I was never rude yep. to anybody. In fact, I was nice to everybody. Mm -hmm. So much so that people started to think I was being fake about it. <laughs> I just I was never concerned about it the about the outer roleplay conflict yep. that was happening. I didn't want to be part of it. But with disco it's inevitable. If you want to be part of the community, that's it's true. you have to you have to deal with. It. And that's the biggest problem. It's the biggest problem, yeah. I agree. Hmm. Okay, well do you wanna add something on that? Anything more to that question? Huh, well, I, I mean, I've had a long, I've spent a while here. I think I joined in 2016, and at the moment we're almost in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good chunk of time. True, true. And what I've seen more than anything, it's 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 really not important whether your faction yeah. wins or loses, uh, how many ships you have parked in space, or you know how many toys you have. You should really mm -hmm. just be focused on having fun. I think the server would be a whole lot better if people were just you know logging for the hell of it to have fun instead sure. of focusing on logging to win or logging off because they see somebody else log on that's that's actually if we true, could yeah. get over that mindset <laughs> the server would be something else true also i mean there's this thing that i agree with um spaz you mentioned something on his uh i guess it was update on this i don't i don't remember what video it was but he was like um you know, you should also consider yourself that you play as a role in this whole universe with all these players, right? So, you are part of the experience, and the other players too. So, if you just log and see, oh shit, like, Xeno's log, okay, I'm gonna log off. You're not contributing 
at all, you know. Even if, if you know you're gonna lose, just go to the battle, right? Just play the game, so to say. Like, don't shy away from having interactions and stuff. This is this, is this kind of fearing that you will be defeated and all. That's the thing you mentioned. I honestly and, don't know where that comes from. Like, people yeah. are afraid of dying. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I don't know where they place this value on what that value is based on, or mm -hmm. even if it's related to currency. It's like this person dies and the stock market crashes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I've died plenty of times on this ship specifically. I don't care. It's okay. True. true it's true. usually in 5v1s where like a battleship will razor me and put me out of my misery. <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah, it's, it's part just, of the experience. Uh, and I kind of signed up for it by taking on uh, the Xenos of all factions. Yeah, yeah. And in Liberty of all places. Pretty much. Pretty much. I don't know. It, it's just that people get caught up in themselves and they forget the fact that they're part of a collective. Yeah. The community's biggest enemy is itself the community. Mm. It treats Gosh. itself like shit. That's true. That's true. Oh well. I'm just thinking of something. I just had something in mind before, but uh, I, I can't remember. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, Reeves, I'm gonna leave the floor to you. Like, can you explain where the people can find you? Where are the Xenos? Where can they find the recruitment thread? And maybe Discord channel and all. Okay, well, the Z there's a saying, actually. I think it was Adam Grierson who said this in roleplay. Mm -hmm. It's that in Liberty, there are Xenos. It's just an undeniable fact. As long <laughs> as there's Liberty, there's going to be Xenos. That's true. So I, I think that should be self-explanatory enough. If you want to meet the Xenos, just go to Liberty. True. Odds are in five minutes, one of us will log and bump into you. Our recruitment can, of course, be found on the forums under our sub-faction of Liberty. You guessed it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I updated the recruitment format recently, yeah. so it actually means something. It's not just asking you if you drink whiskey or not. <laughs> yeah. That was actually the old format. Really? You know, it used to just ask you if you, like, it would you... skip past twenty questions that it wouldn't give you. Yeah. And the twentieth question would be something about whiskey and whether uh... you drank it, and if you were lying about your previous answer. <laughs> Okay. A silly shit like that. Wow. It was amazing, but I had to change it because, you know, it, it's not serious. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you have to set a tone that people can take themselves seriously. Yeah. So I had to change that. Yeah. Uh, our Discord is public. It is posted on the, you know, list of Discord servers. So you can just click on the link and it should just throw you into the server. Is it? Sit down and is it also on your info page, maybe? Can they find I don't think it is. Oh, I don't okay. think it is on the info page. It might be. I, I don't know if I've okay. added it in yet. But yep. if I haven't, I'm definitely going to do that now. Okay. I mean, I'll have that displayed on so people can see if it actually is there. So, no worries in that. Else, you can see it on the Discovery GC official Discord, like you said in the list. Yeah, it is on the index. Yeah, it is yeah. there. Okay. All right. Anything you want to add? No. Nope. Right. Just well, the best of my wishes. <laughs> well, Reeves, thank you so much for joining, man. Thank you for having me. Nice you. having you. And I'll talk to you later, man. Take care. Alright, folks, so this was the Xenos. This was Reeves, leader of the Xenos Alliance, Xeno Alliance faction, XA, as you can see. If you want to join them, as he said, it's on the forum, under Liberty sub forum. And if, you, if you've seen these kind of um, interviews you I'm gonna sh I'm gonna display maybe I have already displayed it where you can find them so uh, I'll have the link under the description and if you aren't in the discovery GC official discord uh, server I'll put the discord under the link as well so uh, be sure to give them a feedback interact with them in Liberty and say some nice words so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you on the next interview <laughs>